Good evening and uh, welcome to Secrets of the Obvious, um, part seven. Um, again, disclaimer before I get started, um, most of these question answer or most of my, <laughs> my recordings are PG 45 at least and requires some practical forgiveness. So um, keep that in mind. Thank you for the questions. They've definitely been pouring in and um, I can get through a, quite a few. Well, I'll get through five or six or seven tonight and uh, I'll guess I'll start doing more of them so that I can cover more of your questions. Keep them coming in. Um, obviously, I can't answer all the questions and some of them I've already answered before, um, but I'll I'll keep at it. Okay, so the first question tonight is, um, the light has come. What does this mean? What does the light mean? The light has come mean. So light is really another word for truth. Um, I often use in examples, I say, imagine God is pure light and light is ever extending. And I use that as an analogy for the, the oneness of God, the non-duality of God, light ever extending. But light is the word light used in, for example, non-dual circles, and also, more importantly, in A Course in Miracles, light is another word for truth. And truth is also another word for pure awareness, awareness ever-expanding, the eternal spaciousness of light, pure spaciousness of Christ's mind as an extension of God's mind. So light or awareness or truth is really the essential nature, the essence. I do this with my fingers because it's it's almost impossible to use words to describe the truth. Everything, when you try and explain truth, it's a concession. Words are but symbols twice removed. So it's our shared essential nature. And that essential nature played out or experienced through the body-mind is what we call joyous peace. It's just joyful peace. Um, and joyful peace is unconditional, and unconditional joyous peace is love. What we call love in this world is really attraction. The truth can't be seen. Light, the true light of our essential nature, the light of God, is not the light of the universe. The light of the universe is the light radiated by the suns. Um, but we can equate light to the truth. Uh, truth can't be seen, um, and it cannot be fully understood while we embody minds. We get glimpses of it, and when we're silently still and aware of the all-pervading presence of God's essence, there it is. That's about as much as one can say about it, other than when we're in that presence. There's no thought. There's no one thinking. There's just a oneness, and there, and and it's an, an expansion of that joyous peace. That's what the light has come means. It's it's come into our awareness. It's also as you as you dial it down, and try and explain it. It it's the understanding. It's a mental understanding of our true essential nature. It's realizing the shared oneness of everything in the universe. We're connected with everything, interconnected to, with everything, attached to nothing. Um, awareness is pure, abstract, no thought. And this awareness of awareness itself is knowing. Because there's no thing to know. There's no one to know. It's an omni presence the presence of god all encompassing it's it's what true meditation is true meditation isn't sitting facing east hands clasped saying a mantra the purpose of of practice of meditation is to get us to a place where the mind can observe thought or no thought and still be present in the presence of that essence energy we call god and we have named god so the light has come means knowing. And it's not, as I say, we, we we conceptually grasp it, we consciously grasp it. 
but truth is beyond consciousness. Consciousness is the realm of the dream. Awareness is the realm of God's mind. Awareness of what? Of itself, ever extending. Awareness of awareness, the mind of God. Mind, little mind, as a character of dreaming, capital M mind, in God's mind, capitalized word mind, mind within mind, and holy mind. I hope that brings some clarity to that question. Thank you for that question. Beautiful question. Next one is um, slightly more lighthearted, but clearly this person wants to know. And the question is, do animals have consciousness like humans, albeit at a, at a slightly different level? Um, no, animals don't have consciousness. And no, humans don't have consciousness either. <laughs> Let me explain. What we call human consciousness is egoic consciousness. Mind is, dreaming mind is consciousness. And the universe are activities appearing in consciousness. They're thoughts of about itself in terms of what it could be appearing as things, places, events, the universe, activities, sp space, time, matter. The entire universe is the appearance of consciousness of the dreamer's mind. We don't have consciousness. We tap into the consciousness of the mind and our consciousness moves from pure instinct to it starts to become consciously aware first of body, mind, space, time, and then it starts becoming aware of awareness, bridge consciousness. And then once we finally put these bodies down, there's a transcendence. But consciousness plays out while body minds appear. And body minds appear in consciousness. Nothing has consciousness. Everything appears in consciousness. To say that something, a body has consciousness, it's like looking at a screen in a cinema house onto which a picture has been projected and then asking as if, do the characters on the screen have screen? No, the characters appear on the screen, appear in the consciousness of the mind. But then what about free will? Surely we have free will. Script is, is scripted. You don't have free will. The only real will you have is to choose again, Holy Son of God. Choose right-mindedness. In other words, choose not to identify with the body. Identify with the essence energy, spirit. Identify with spirit. Be spirit knowingly. And what is spirit? On a screen, what do you see on a screen? It's light particle, pure light, part, light particles played through the filter of the, of, the, of the script. What's the script? The film. And so light particles filtered through the filter of the of consciousness, the dreaming mind, appears as characters on the screen. Within character is pure light. If you were to take away the form, what would the light, what would the screen be lit by? Pure light. Is the screen itself real? No, the light is real. The light has come. Previous question. So what appears on the screen is just pure light particles filtered through perception we fall fallen asleep and we start to become self-aware we start to self-perceive that perception creates activates projection and then we perceive the projection and judge it projection leads to ten thousand things or in this case of this universe gazillions of things and the minute we project judgment commences we start to space time we become aware and we start to realize what we are through the experience of what we're not, which naturally takes a judgmental process. We start to judge good and bad, right and wrong. I am this, I'm not that. So judgment is actually a natural occurrence of a dreaming mind desperately trying to figure out what it is. And so it, it wants to remain alive. The fear thought, the sin thought, the guilt thought wants to stay alive. And so it tries to get the characters to believe they have consciousness. It doesn't want to die. It's already dead. It just doesn't know it. The dream started, the dream ended. 
why does the dream seem to be appearing? Because we're on recall. We haven't forgiven. So we keep recalling our dream because we haven't yet forgiven it. That's what it means to choose again. You keep recalling it. It seems like it's another day, another year, another body, another lifetime. It's the same instant in eternity, replaying as billions of stories. Hence, you've heard me say this before, there's no you or I or anyone else or Jesus in right-mindedness. Jesus, the awakened to self character in the dream, remains an echo, a memory in the wrong mind, a memory of right-mindedness in the wrong mind. And so when we tap into the Jesus consciousness or a past life consciousness, we're actually tapping into a memory still in the mind. In the case of a Jesus, we're tapping into a mind that let go of consciousness and awoke to self. And so it remains accessible to the dream characters. It's dissolved straight back into the right mind. It no longer, there's no characters in right mindedness. Right mindedness is shared is our shared essential nature with God. It's our shared being with God. There's no characters in our shared beingness with God. It's one indivisible self. So animals don't have consciousness, nor do humans. We appear in consciousness. I hope that clarifies it. Oh, this is one of those. But I, I leave them in because it's okay to get some criticism. And, of course, for as many people are going to find me and find my my South African cowboy mannerisms uh, uh, more aligned with theirs. You're going to find people that are less aligned with theirs. But anyway, I, I'll I'll share you with this question. It says, Luji, you use words that are not in the course. Now, please don't call me Luji. Just call me Lou. It's just a nickname. Just, you know, Lou. It's good, you know. And if you can't remember, just think of a toilet. There it is, Lou. Go to the Lou, you know. Go to Lou and ask a question. Use, you're using words that are not in the course, such as surrender and essence energy. Can you explain why, um, exclamation mark, there are many course students that disagree with you. In other words, you disagree with me, but you're now using many course students that disagree with me. And then you say, please clarify and you exclamation mark this again. Okay, beloved, here it goes. You're absolutely right. I do use words such as fuck, Fuck you and go fuck yourself. And they're not in the course. <laughs> Are you offended? Practice forgiveness. First of all, I'm not a Course in Miracles teacher. Yes, I've studied the course for 12 years. And yes, I have taught at many, many uh, Course in Miracles workshops around the world. But I don't consider myself a course teacher. I don't consider myself a teacher of anything. I do this because I love to share my transcendence process with the rest of my fractured cells. I know you're all part of one indivisible self. I know I'm a character in the dreaming mind as much as you are. I also take full responsibility for having dreamt up this entire thing. I don't know you explanation. What gives you the authority to judge me? <laughs> I'm only sharing my direct experience because I love to do this. I'm built this way. I'm designed this way. I don't share anything I haven't experienced directly. I'm not someone that reads from a book and reads a lot. You notice, I don't post posts from the Course of Miracles. Why would I do that? Everybody has their own co course. Everybody can read it. Oh, I should post daily reminders. What, are you too lazy to pick up the book and read for yourself? Do you need to go to Facebook or Twitter or whatever to go and read a daily quote? Don't be so lazy. Give your tithing to God. Give a bit of time to God. And again, like I say, I'll only share my direct experience when I abide in awareness, the upload commences. And I, I give four hours a day to abidance and contemplation and communion and prayer. And I then share this willingly, joyfully, in the clearest way I can with complete total conviction. I wouldn't share something that's a concept. There's enough concepts and ideas and dogmas out in the world. The world doesn't need another parrot. My name's Falcon. Falcon. 
above the battlefield, not a caged parrot, not a radio regurgitating the airwaves of some dogmatic belief. I, I choose to stay above the battlefield. I only come down to issue backhanded slaps to those who are completely leading others astray. And I choose to do that. It's, it gives me great joy to be someone who, when I see something going wrong in the world and others harming others, I choose to step in. Of course, there's going to be people that are criticizing what I have to say. I still find it amazing. I read posts often. I listen to YouTube videos often too. And I don't agree with everything I listen to, but I don't go and, oh, I disagree with you and go and give an essay. I spend my time wisely abiding in God. I don't focus on what I disagree with. I focus on what serves my awakening to self process. <laughs> I'm continually refining my understanding. Go back a year into my YouTube videos. You'll realize I wasn't where I am now. And where am I now? I'm always here now, just with deeper clarity, deeper conviction. Go back a couple of years. I was angry, <laughs> often. Um, but I'm sharing it anyway. Use your time wisely. Don't spend your time criticizing and finding fault. Find a teacher with whom you most align and follow them. They'll have a certain language. Like I will use the word consciousness and awareness in, in very different ways. Whereas a great teacher like Rupert Spira, for example, uses them synonymously. But then he'll also use words like pure consciousness, which is really relating to my use of the word awareness. A Rupert Spira says things like God is dreaming. I don't agree. I believe an extension of God, the son of God is dreaming. I don't go onto Rupert's post and go, I disagree with you. What am I gaining by that? I'm just showing my ignorance because it's a judgment. I look, I listen. If he, if someone says something that I'm not aligned with, it reinforces my alignment. I do the same. And ultimately realize that whether you agree with me or not, I don't give it any thought. I don't give it any attention. We're all contributing to our collective awakening. Each one of us awakening to self is contributing to the awakening of the collective. That's why the new generations as they come through come at a much higher level than what we were as children. Because every single one of us rejoining, remembering, becoming a member of the Christ mind once again, dissolving our projections, our body-mind projections, is aiding to the heating up, the lighting up of the collective dreaming mind. Of course, as souls return to the secret dream and then reincarnate back into the projected dream, as the collective rises in temperature, rises in awareness, each next generation in the in the appearance of linear space-time is coming through at a higher awakening. Remember, we're not moving forward. We're, we're actually returning to the self. There's no forward and backwards. It's just returning inwards to the self. And it's already over. We're just remembering that it's already over. We're just remembering our two, true self. I hope that clarifies it. The next one just really it 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 struck it struck me in my heart. This really just I could feel this person's pain. She wrote me a very very long email, and I I just took the the important points out of it. And and this is the sad thing. And and again, one of the reasons why I don't call myself a Course in Miracles teacher. Um, I'm I don't want to criticize, but I'm seeing some things in the Course community which I disagree with. And therefore, don't consider myself a course teacher, uh, a sharer of non-dual understanding. Yes, but a teacher, no. This, this lady says, this young lady says, my brother is gay. My course group says that they don't want him to attend our work groups. They say that you cannot ascend if you are gay. Whoa, really? 
is this true in your opinion? I'm really torn between being faithful to my group and being supportive of my brother. Any suggestions? Take a deep breath. Here goes. So know this about Luke. I'm bisexual. Okay. I'm completely bisexual. I ride anything with two wheels. Yes, I have a preference for little red Italians, you know. And and very much I love loud Americans. And occasionally the classic Brit, although they always leak oil. Seriously, I don't really mind. I like the long-legged Germans too. My favorites are still the Austrians because they're completely wild and jump up on their back legs and drive you absolutely insane with smiles. I'm completely bisexual. Of course, there's going to be some people that say, you should only ride a Harley. After all, you were hog road captain of hog South Africa for 10 years. I ride anything. I have a collection of, of two-wheel supermodels. Absolutely love to ride them all. Does that mean I can't ascend in the ranks of motorcycles? What is gay, homosexual, trans, or anything got anything to do with awareness? And more importantly, how dare anyone, especially if you call yourself a Course in Miracles student or a Taoist or a Buddhist or a non-dualist, be judging other people based on the preference of their sexuality. How sad and how empty must you be inside? And then to use the Course or the Bible to justify your sense of separation. Let me tell you somebody. Let me tell you something about someone who's a homophobe. A homophobe is afraid of their own sexuality. A male homophobe has got gay thoughts. He thinks about other men sexually, but he doesn't want to get bust, so he projects his homophobia. Homophobia is just pure judgment. And then they say things like God says, and, and they'll find anything. If you want to find proof, you'll find it anywhere. In toilet paper, newspaper, or the Bible, all the same nonsense. The Bible works just as well as toilet paper. It's all nonsense. If a Course in Miracles community is saying that your brother's not welcome and you're torn between a Course in Miracles group and your brother, do yourself a favor. Where's the love coming from and where's the love projected at? Course is making you sad. It's making you torn, the Course group. You love your brother. Do you really need to ask the question? Leave that group and find a group that accepts everyone. I accept everyone. In this country of ours, my, South Africa, 25 years ago, was steeped in racism and, disc and discrimination. 25, 26 years later, it's a, it's a country where we embrace complete differences. Yes, it has its problems. Yes, like every country, it's got its corrupt politicians. Yes, it's got crime, as does every other country. But yeah, we accept one another. And in a country with all these different beliefs, we accept one another. How can the coarse community or a religious community or a spiritual community be so judgmental? What's wrong with you if you do that? What's wrong with you, really? Turn within and imagine how would Jesus have acted since there's so many coarse Jesus freaks. How would Jesus have acted? if a gay person came into his community. I welcome anyone, and our, it's irres irrespective of your color, your creed, your belief, your your sexuality, your, your orientation. What does it matter? We're one shared indivisible being. Every person's character, every person's story is a thought about himself. We, the dreamer, has thought. As we fell asleep, we forgot what we were. And we imagined what we can be in gazillions, nine septillion ways. And part of that story was challenging ourselves through our sexual orientation and finding acceptance amongst one another. If you're still judging people on the base of their sex 
their sexuality, the color of their skin, their belief systems, then you're trapped. You're trapped in judgment. And you can quote the blue book with the gold writing as often as you want to. You're still completely asleep. You're as asleep as a rock, even more than a rock, because at least a rock was never awake. You've fallen asleep and you've gone into dense, deep sleep. And the ego has now made you feel grandiose and special because you belong to a special get out of hell club called A Course in Miracles. And yet you're the most judgmental person out there. Stop it. It's the same thing as reading through other people's posts just to find criticism, just to find fault. If you have nothing nice to say, I'm sure your mommy taught you this. If you have fuck all nice to say, shut the fuck up. Be still and know I am God. So, dear, your brother has come into your space to show you unconditional love. It's what the course should be doing. It's what the course group should be doing. If they can't show you unconditional love and you choose to stay, accept your brother as he is. If your brother wants to join you, find a group where he's accepted. And use this as an opportunity to forgive them. For they know not what they do. I hope that brings clarity. And just know my heart goes out to you and to your brother. With complete love and total compassion. You deserve to be loved. You deserve to be accepted. Regardless of where you go. Regardless of where you think you are. Love has no conditions. That's the love of God. Okay. Next question. Lou, can you explain the correlation? Oh, oh, this is going to upset some people. The correlation between LOA, law of attraction, I'm assuming, is what you meant, and Akim. This person is obviously young. They write in abbreviations. I'm struggling to attract joy and peace into my life. Please help. Okay. So LOA stands for Law of a souls, law of our souls. And of course, in miracles is the law for the just be souls, two types of souls, our souls and just be souls. Stop being an our soul. Drop the law of attraction nonsense. Regardless if Abraham or whoever channeled Zork from Zukan is now telling you, this is how you make manifest. Beloved, you've manifested the entire universe. The whole damn thing. All of it. Of course, you can't remember because the secret dream projecting into this dream can't remember the secret dream being spirit projecting into this dream and why you've done it. You've hidden the fact that you're afraid of God because you've imagined the vengeful God. You imagine this God's going to punish you and, and therefore you want to prove to this God that you're an innocent victim of the world. Everybody else is responsible and now you want to appease God and while you're trying to appease him, you want to law of your attraction, law of attraction yourself into abundant joy. Abundant joy is pure energy flowing. It's not physical. It's not quantitative. It's not stuff. Law of attraction is a misperception of the law of one. God's God only has one law, the law of one, immutable law of one. The law of the ego, there's lots of laws of the ego. Perhaps I'll do a talk on the law of God versus, versus the law of the ego, the laws of the ego, the mutable laws of the ego that apply to the dream only, to space-time. Law of God is what ha one has, all have, and what have we all got? The, the eternal extension of God's love. That's what the miracle is. The only time the law of God plays a role in the law of the dreaming mind is through the miracle. It's the interception. It's the correction principle. So law of attraction is a misperception of the law of one. Now, the law of one means we're always extending what we are. And what are we? The love of God. The law of extension means to share ourselves knowingly. Law of attraction. So... Self, Christ self, shares itself. Ego attracts unto itself. Law of attraction is about attracting people, places, things, and events unto yourself in order to live out your dream fantasy, your dream of separation fantasy, where you become the hero 
of the dream, prince and princess or whatever else you want to call it. Law of attraction is pure ego. You can vision board yourself into a standstill. And the more you make manifest, the more you'll want to hang on to it and protect it. Take it from someone who by 29 years old was a millionaire. And I come from a poor, I was a poor kid, other side of the railway. Really, there was a railway. Policeman's son, no hope in hell of ever going anywhere, ever getting education. I found a way to do it. I attracted myself into whatever I wanted to achieve. By the time I was 29, 30, I had it all. The Ferrari, the model wife, the motorcycles, the, the Armani suits, the watches, the I had it all. And I was just as miserable as I'd always been. It took a radical transformation, a physical dying and a letting go to realize the joyous lightness of being requires no thing because there's no one to attract things unto itself. Love is sharing. The law of one is sharing, extending the love we are. Law of attraction is egoic, attracting in order to be happy. The essence of what you are is pure joyous happiness. Being aware of being aware, pure joyous extension, sharing our passionate nature, our essential nature with one another. Law of attraction is about gaining. You want to really do non-duality? You really want to do A Course in Miracles? Drop the trying to attract. Seek you first the kingdom and all else will be given you. Funny enough, when you let it all go, it all starts coming and then you don't want it anymore. Divine providence. Know this. When you truly align, surrender to thy will be done, meaning you're not giving up, you're aligning. You're putting him in charge. You're stepping back and letting him lead the way. God is pure love. What do you think he wants for his children? Okay. Well, of course, God doesn't know about us as characters, but what does he want his son to experience while his son dreams? He wants his son, God wants his son to experience the joyous likeness of being. And so the characters that call unto their true self, that call unto the source of the true self, unto God through prayer, through devotion, by seeking out their true nature, God replies. God wants us all to be happy because as we realize our true, happy, essential nature, the dreamer awakens. We realize self, the dreamer awakens. The son of God awakens unto himself. And that's why when you place your faith in God, he takes care of you. God's got this. God's got you. He's got you. Just And don't go and sell it all and then sit back and hope. Just there's nothing to give up. Don't make anything real and then push it away. Pushing it away makes it real. Push it away. It's the same as trying to draw it and attract it unto itself. Stop trying to attract. Stop trying to reject. Denouncing and rejecting is the same as trying to attract. You've made it real and you want to pull it unto yourself or push it away. Realize your interconnectedness with all of it. Connected to all of it. Attached to none of it. Attached to nothing. Dispassionate about this. But the passion of the Christ just flows. Dispassionate about things, passionate about our beingness, our shared beingness. What's the correlation between law and attraction? It's law of attraction and, and a course of miracles? Zero. Nada. Seek ye first the kingdom, all else shall be given you. You don't have to vision board. What are you vision boarding? You're vision boarding people, places, things, and events. What you can see, what the eyes can see is not real. What do you want to attract unto self? You want to be thyself knowingly and then extend it. You want to attract peace into your life, joy into your life, love into your life. Be the sharer of peace. Be the sharer of joy. Be the sharer of love. No judgment. Total acceptance of what is. Accept people as they are. No judgment. Choose. Choose to see the face of Christ. Face the memory, the reflection. I am as God created me. I am not a body. I am free. That's not a body that is free. That is still as God created it. All of it is the essence of God, the essence, the energy, the love, spirit, ever extending. Drop the law of attraction. You'd be on this. That's why you found the course. And know this much. You'll be taken care of. I'm prime example. I'm taken care of. I haven't given up my day job. I still run a company. 
I still provide for hundreds of families. It still gives me absolutely great joy. I love going to work. I love the strategies. I love the marketing. I love the communication. I love the fact that the company I run, Sphera Bionutrition, shares a healthier way of living with all its clients. It gives me great joy to be of service. Okay, next one. This is a, a serious one. And actually, I saw a very similar comment in in, in one of the um, Course in Miracles support groups. Someone posted something very similar. So this is perfect if you are that person who asked the question. Um, now that I'm awakening to self, how do I ensure that I don't fall asleep again? Great question. You can't fall asleep again. From the moment you started seeking, even though it may be like ebbs and tides, ebbs and flows, the ocean comes in, the ocean goes out. Sometimes you're aware of self and sometimes you're trapped in the dream. If you look closely, you're actually ascending in circles. Just, you're getting there. You can't go back to sleep. Sometimes people say, oh, but ignorance is bliss. I wish I didn't know this, especially when we're going through stage one and stage two of development of trust. You're like, ah, fuck, I don't know what anything's for. This is just, oh, I wish I didn't know this. Hey, the reason you're in this direction is it wasn't working out. Don't forget, ignorance isn't bliss. Ignorance is suffering. Awakening is bliss. Awakening is joyous likeness of being. It's gentle. Yes, there were the Ramanas, the Jesus, the Buddhas of this world who awoke at a young age. You're in process, whether it be this lifetime or the next, doesn't matter. You're in process. And as you choose again, Holy Son, it becomes lighter and lighter until you realize your essential nature is the infinite lightness of being. You've started down the path. You've asked and you will receive. You can't go back to sleep again. And don't beat yourself up. If you catch yourself, ooh, I was judging, or ooh, I was completely unconscious, it's okay. The minute you've caught it, you're nullifying all the previous unconscious moments. Every time you return to the presence here now, the eternal presence, the eternal presence of God, you nullify everything that happened before. You wipe it all clean. Yes, you may rethink about it tomorrow and seemingly bring it back. But trust me, when you are into the awakening stage, Holy Spirit's like a big eraser. It's just erasing that canvas that you painted full of drama, the hellish you know, Dante's Inferno that you've painted on this canvas every moment that you abide in presence, every moment that you practice forgiveness, that paintbrush, that, that cleaning brush is just taking layer upon layer until eventually a blank canvas is seen again. You've started awakening to self. You can't fall asleep again. We're all awakening to self. Every single character in the mental construct of the dreaming mind, the activities of the dreaming mind, is collectively awakening. It's like a lava lamp. It's cold when it's cold. The little bit of lava becomes jello and it floats to the top or the bottom, sorry. As it heats up, it, it starts to molt and it rises to the surface. As parts of it cool down, it comes back down and then rises back up. And that's the reincarnation cycle. You go back up, you collect some more thoughts about yourself joins again and becomes another body mind and so the whole thing's eating up at some stage that lava lamp gets so hot it's just one big lit bulb at the end christ mind awakening to itself you can't go back to sleep holy son of god you're awakening to self the light has come okay next one um i've seen lots of questions like this before but that's the nature of course in miracle students they have to find fault with everything and this one says um, they read Gary Renard's books, blah, blah, blah. Gary Renard sees beings, Arten and Persa. Is this true or did he make them up? Question mark, exclamation mark. I don't believe him. And so this person goes on, very unhappy with Gary Renard, and then goes on to say, but it's Gary Renard that led him to the course. Dude, just gratitude. Just be grateful to Gary. I am. He certainly brought me Close. I mean, I had the course and I couldn't get into it until I read Gary's book. And I'd read many other authors that had, that was quoting from the course. Neil Donald Walsh, um, et cetera, et cetera. The hundreds, in actual fact. Um, 
let's all be grateful to our brother Gary because he's brought it in such a palatable way. Okay, so does Gary imagine art and persa or are they real? Well, in our subjective reality, we're all body minds, so we're all in a subjective reality. Absolutely, in Gary's subjective reality, art and persa are real. What are art and persa? Echoes of eternity. Echoes are beings that are more awakened than what it seems to appear here. Just like angels who appear to people. They are fractured representations of right-mindedness echoing in the dream, like a Jesus. The Jesus character is has awoken to self, and the memory of Jesus in the wrong mind still retains. What happened to the true essence of Jesus? He's returned to right-mindedness. What happened to art and Persa? The essence of what art and Persa are, are pure right-mindedness. As echoes of eternity in the dream, accessible by echoes of eternity appearing as body minds, we see them. Now, if art and Persa appear and disappear, art and Persa as characters are not real. The essence of them and the essence of all of us are real, is real. It, it reminds me of a story. Um, Papa G, in his awakening transcendence process, went and saw Ramana Maharshi, his guru. And he told he told Ramana the story that Papa G used to see this Shiva dancing. He was Shiva we would come and meet with him and play with him. When he was alone and isolated, Shiva would appear. And Ramana Maharshi said to Papa G, is Shiva with you here now? He said, no, no. Shiva only appears when I'm alone. And Ramana said to Papaji, if it appears and disappears, it was never real. And Papaji realized what he's seeing as Shiva is actually he shared self, shared essential nature at a higher level of consciousness. So are art and person real? They're real for Gary. And they're real for you if you believe the beautiful teachings that they're bringing through. Do they physically exist? No. Do you physically exist? No. Does this physically exist? Does Gary physically exist? No. They are layers, echoes of our true self. And the beauty is just like when Helen channeled the voice, which she believed was the voice of Jesus because that was a belief system, art and Persa are representations, projections of a way more awake mind, right mind, bringing through the memory of our true self through to Gary, who then shares his voice and brings us into alignment. You don't have to believe Gary. But look at the beautiful teaching. Look how aligned they are. Look how it's brought so many a person to the course. Let's be grateful to Gary, as opposed to finding criticism. And um, and Gary, if you're listening, don't listen to the critics. Who gives a shit? Really? I mean, they're so lost in translation. It's like those that they only scroll, they troll to find fault and comment. Why? Because they're narcissists. They want to engage in anger. They, they're so lost to themselves. Forgive them, Father, for what they did not do. And to forgive is to forget. So when you've forgiven those thoughts in form that are criticizing, they disappear out of your awareness and you forget them. To forgive is to forget. Art and person, Jesus. Buddha, Krishna, are representations, closer representations of our true, shared, indivisible Christ self, with which we share and extend the love of God. I hope that clears it up for you. Okay, and then before I take a break, the last one for now, this is a beautiful question, is how do I forgive? Okay, in order to truly forgive, my brother, you have to see the benefit of forgiveness. So let's take it in layers, although it's completely seamless. Let's just, let's take it, the loo, this is the loo version of forgiveness. It's in layers. So the first forgiveness level is realizing if I carry this, this anger, this person hurt me, this curse, listen, I experienced severe racism, severe, and I was never good enough. And if I, forgive those thoughts of people, you know, these attack thoughts, people that attack me and I replay those thoughts. 
I again bring myself into the same pain I experienced in the illusionary past. I forgive because I no longer want to carry it. The benefit of forgiving is I no longer have to carry it. And the best forgiveness tool for that is Ho'oponopono. It lines up beautifully with the course. So it's like you, you, you bring that character in front of you. You imagine that person in front of you, the person that said something ugly, father, mother, uncle, brother, kids at school, teachers at school, whatever. And you say, I'm sorry. To whom? You're saying sorry to yourself. I'm sorry that I had to go through this. Please forgive me for putting myself in a situation where I had experienced this pain. Thank you for showing me that if I forgive this, I release myself. Thank you. I love you because you brought me this lesson. We are healed. And, we, and you do it again until that person in your mind seems to dissolve. I'm going to pop up again a few times. You keep doing it until they long, no longer pop up. First level of forgiveness. Second level of forgiveness is lesson. What is the lesson? The lesson is don't go into places like it because people are going to beat you up. No. The lesson is if I keep beating myself up, I'm going to be attracted to places where people beat me up too. The world is an outer projection of an inner condition. Ah, so I've done this unto myself. Second level of forgiveness is realizing I'm attracting the situations so I can turn inwards and realize why I'm attracting the situations. It's because there's still something in this fractured projection's mind or the appearance of its mind, because there's no mind. Remember, we're in mind. We seem to have a mind, but we've only got a receiver. We don't think anything. We're thought through. We don't experience anything. We're experienced through. And so if I can sit back and realize, okay, this filter contains the judgmental thought which I've hung on to. If I'm willing to let it go, the world becomes an outer reflection of an inner peaceful condition, a new world, a new way of seeing. We're starting to see heaven on earth. So next level of forgiveness is I forgive this because I realized I needed to learn the lessons that I've done this unto myself. Regardless of how cruel and how mean and how vengeful and how ugly and how disgusting as was, I've done this unto myself. Not I was an innocent child and I now chose to be hurt like that. No, no. I, the projection of the dreaming mind, chose this activity as this character in order to try and remember itself. And I now choose to remember with my true self, remember, become a member of my true Christ self. So I forgive to release these filters. So the light within is seen without and without is a mirror of what's within. Second level forgiveness. And now we move to the final level of forgiveness. It's the realization that none of this is true. All I'm really forgiving myself is for forgetting my I amness. And how do I forgive so that I remember my I amness? You don't focus on the negative to forgive. We realize that forgiving and receiving are one and the same thing. The word for giving, forgiving and receiving are one and the same thing. And so what am I forgiving? I'm forgiving myself for thinking I could forget what can never be forgotten because what never can be forgotten is the truth and the truth cannot be, forgot be forgotten. And so I forgive myself for thinking, for buying into my erroneous egoic idea that I could forget myself, forget God, push God away, kill the memory of God within and so the final level of forgiveness is simply realizing I've forgotten what I am and I choose to remember and I choose to remember by abiding. It's simply stating I am, full stop, God is, full stop, and then abiding. Return to self, the direct path. The thoughts come, we just watch them, but we don't pay attention. We don't engage them. They come, they try and engage them. They try and engage them with thoughts of you suffering in the past. Past isn't real. I'm here now. I'm perfectly healed. I'm not a body. I'm free. I'm still as God created me. You're not pulling me into the drama. I'm not going to defend it. 
I'm not going to justify it. I'm not going to attack the characters because it's designed to pull me in and make me angry, make me a victim, fight or flight. I let go. I let God. Okay, now next step. Don't be too hard on yourself because now you've done it. You feel better. You go back into the world and a mirror comes, another mirror. And it's again, someone's going to represent a painful, hurtful past that triggers your unforgiveness. It could be a parent. It could be a bully at school. You just realize, ah, it's the ego playing again. It's trying to pull me back in. I look again, I just smile. I simply do nothing. That person is going to say something, going to try and tempt you into engagement. No, thanks. No, thanks. And be vigilant. Return. And then immediately, you want to get rid of that attack thought, the fastest way. So silent stillness brings it about. Gratitude accelerates. Sharing it dissolves it. Be thyself knowing. You can do this. God's got you. It's the most natural thing to do. Why? Because miracles are natural and everybody's right. And if miracles are natural, forgiveness leads us to a permanent state of miracles. You deserve this. You deserve this, holy son of God. Let's stop recording. We take more questions now.